saying, Slack not the hand from the servant. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us for all the things of the upper that the bread in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gideon, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly, and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel, and slew them with a great slaughter at Gideon, and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Oro, and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel, and were in the going down to Beth Oro, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died, and there were more which died with the head stone that, than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then he spake, O oh glory, he spake unto them, unto the Lord, in the day when the, the Lord delivered up the Amorite before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Stand, some stand thou still upon Gideon, and thou move in the valley of Ajah. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemy. Is not this written in the book of Jashem? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord acted unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. And Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, and the camp to give them. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. Victory is ours, but the battle is yours. Father, as you bombarded the Amorite, you bombarded, Father God, the people of uh, the Jerusalem. You Bombarding all these people, Father God. If there be any enemy among us, Father, bombard them in the name of Jesus. We pray also, Father God, those who are gathering against us. Oh Lord, expose them and bomb them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we glorify your name. Every satanic altar that is rising itself to cause pain and ruin the life here, Lord, we pray that. Today, right now, let it be born and completely burned with the Holy Spirit fire. We thank you, Father God. Every desire, Father God, must be met. Every plan, let it come to pass. Every project, Father God, everyone has a desire. We pray, Father God, that we accompany them together in the name of Jesus. We glorify your name. We pray that the blood will speak here, Lord. Every infirmity will be made right in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every unrighteousness will be cleansed with the blood of Jesus. And we declare that any power that rises against your people will be paralyzed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God. And what happened is that 
you are doing it on your own. But when we are with God, whenever you face calamity or you face challenges or you face trouble, God comes to your hand. God will show up because of your relationship with God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So it's important in life to understand that on your own, you're not going to make it. On your own, things will not be done. On your own, you will struggle. You will find life frustrating. But you need God at all times. Because the fact that you are alive, the fact that you breathe, the fact that you move, the fact that you know who you are, it is the grace of God in our life. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why it's important, my brother and sister. Do not undermine your fellowship with God. Keep your relationship with God in good and high level. For in the time of need, God will come to your rescue. Praise the name of the Lord. We have read a long text here of uh, Joshua rescuing the Gibeonites. Let me perhaps give you a bit of uh, history who are the Gibeonites? The Gibeonites are the people of Gibeon. When Israel left Egypt, Moses has died. God has told Moses to bring in Joshua, so Joshua to take over. In the process of the journey, this Gibeonite went as if they came from a far country to sign or make a deal with the Israelites that the Israelites would not attack them. In fact, they were just in the entourage of the Amorites and Jerusalem, but they pretended to show uh, Joshua that they were coming from a far country and they didn't want Israel to attack them. So what happened next is that Israel has attacked Ahab. He has attacked Jericho. Now, moving toward Jerusalem, in the meantime, these five kings, the kings of, uh, uh, his name is called Adonizedek, who is the king of Jerusalem. And he has heard how Joshua prevailed over Ahab and uh, uh, Jericho. Now he calls all these kings so they can come and fight the Gibeonites because they were not happy why the Gibeonites has made a treaty of peace with Israel. So Adonisek, the king of Jerusalem, goes and see the king of Hebron. He goes and see the king of uh, uh, Jarmut, the king of uh, Jaffa, and, and the king of Lachish and the Beer, that they can come together to attack the Gibeonites, who were the allies of the Israelites. But the Gibeonites feeling themselves unworthy not to fight this fight. They called to the uh, ally of Israel. They said, Joshua, if you don't come down here, we're going to be finished by all these five kings who have come together to destroy us. So you have to know also in life, whenever you are in trouble, if your enemy cannot prevail over you, your enemy will go away and seek other dark forces, other rulers of darkness, other principalities to come and destroy you. So the same thing is happening here with the Gibeonites. So Joshua came down to fight on behalf of the Gibeonites. But Joshua realized that the time was going so fast that darkness may come and you will not be able to do the work and fight these five uh, 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 kingdoms who has come uh, against him and the Gibeonites. So he had no other option to talk to God. And God said to him, Joshua, fear not God. I have delivered them unto you. One of these days we have to pray that God will deliver our enemies in our hands so we can 
purpose of the man. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We can make our enemy a footstool. Our enemy will become a slave. Our enemy will become a worker in the mighty name of Jesus. But we have to go to right with God if we want this thing to happen in our life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So in the process of time, if you look at the Bible here, uh, 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 verse 11, they said, and it came to pass. And whenever you hear in the Bible, they say, it, it came to pass, it means that God realized or God made things to happen within the fullness of God. So while they were fighting, Joshua has spoken to God, has prayed to God, and God said, fear not. God, I have delivered them to you, but Joshua is now looking at the ah, the sun is going down. Darkness is about to appear. And Joshua has to pray. He said, I command the sun to stand still. I command the moon not to move. Now, when we look at scientifically, the, the sun doesn't move. It is the earth that moves around the sun. The sun is still. But what here, basically, God is the master of everything. He created the sun, the moon, the stars. He has control over it. Nothing can challenge God. So God approved the request of Joshua. So basically what the scientists are saying, the sun didn't stand still because it's always still, but what happened is the earth was delayed. They call it about uh, 6.6 uh, trillion uh, uh, delay that was uh, caused for not to move. So Joshua can be able to finish off the work he started with the Judeo. Things will happen like that in our life. Joshua is not different to us. He was created by the same God. He has blood flowing in his veins. He has water inside of him. He has one head. Two feet like us. If God can hear Joshua, God can hear you too. Whatever predicament or whatever project or whatever challenge or whatever assignment or issues you have, when you present it to God, God is able to make it come to pass. If you understand this, amen. amen. So it's important in life to understand that those who have walked right before God, God never let them die. God never abandoned them. God never ignored to the need. He always made sure that he provided to the need. That's why David is saying that the Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack anything. Unless you make God your source, you are making yourself in a very difficult position and you find that frustrating. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want you to look at your, I want to translate this into the real life. Because here I was telling the story of Joshua, how he managed to defeat the king of the Bion, the king of Lachis, the king of uh, Piran or Jamut, and the king of Jaffa, as well as the king of the Amorite and the king of Jerusalem. But what it means for this, it means that Joshua used the power God has instilled in him. You have the same power God has given you the very day you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He imparted, he put in you a measure of faith. So therefore, we have to be able to understand that the same power Joshua had is also being given to you. And it depends on 
your level of relationship with God for you to begin to see the manifestation of the one of you see. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important for us to understand what power Joshua had compared to the power we have. The same power Joshua had is the same power we have. Joshua stood right before God, we also stand right before God. Joshua spoke the word, we also speak the word. Joshua used his right, we also use our right. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's look at what power of autonomy means. We define power as the ability to act or produce an effect or the ability to get results. That's power. And the capacity of being acted upon or undergoing an effect. That's power. For us to move, we need power. For us to come together here and to have a, 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 a loving room, we need power. If there's no power, we won't be here because it will be done. And also, power means having the, the authority, the position of authority, capacity, or right. The second thing I would say to you that power of authority are for voluntary delegation of authority by the principle to the agent. We see God here telling Joshua, said, Joshua, go and overcome them because I've already delivered them unto you. God has already passed on the power on Joshua, saying that Joshua, you will defeat them. Go. And this is not the first time we see that. We see that also in the book of Samuel, where God gave power to David when the Amalekites came to uh, 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 spoil the entire uh, uh, land of Gilgal. So God, he said to David, said, David, pursue them, overtake them, and recover Everything is taken from you because they took the wife, they took the children, they took all the cattle they had. And God is delegating the authority to David. He's delegating the authority to Joshua. He said, pursue them. And when God is delegating his power on us, we become his attorney. We are acting on his behalf. And God does that voluntarily based on his love in our lives. I'm sure you will hear from one most of the time people will ask you, do you have the lasting power of attorney? In this part of the world, even if you are brothers and sisters and you go and want to know what's going on in the, about your brother or your sister or your father or your mother, the first thing they ask you, do you have the lasting power of attorney? I remember a few years ago, there's a woman, the mother had collapsed, but she knew how to access the bank account. But something went wrong. He went, she went to the bank and said, my mom is not well. I need to withdraw the money so I can be able to pay for her, 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 the cost of her, of her health. But what happened here is the bank just asked the lady, the, the lady said, do you have the lasting power of attorney? The minute the woman said, I don't have, they turned her away. They stopped talking to her. They said, unless you have that authority that has been given to you to act on your behalf, we will not listen to you. And God is now passing on power to Joshua to defeat these kings because the power of God had been transferred into Joshua. Joshua now acts like God. You as well here. You have to act like God when things are not working well, when trouble is everywhere, when you think that you're going to be persecuted or you're going to be oppressed, you speak to God. God will grant you that power to defeat your enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So here is a voluntary transfer of authority. 
The principal end is God. And the edge of the end is you. Remember last time? I used God as the dominant. But here, I'm changing a little bit for you to understand that you may find another word, principal or dominant, is the same thing. Agent or you is the same thing. In that we are the agent. God is the principal. God is the dominant. We are his sons and daughters here. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the principal has not been given up his own power to do the same function, but rather has granted you and I the legal authority to enter to perform various tasks on behalf of the principal. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember when God gave the authority to Joshua. I said, Joshua, pursue them. You will defeat them because I've already given you, I've already given them unto you. Didn't mean that God gave up all his power. We have to understand that the earth is the colony of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. The earth is the colony of heaven. Heaven wants the earth to be like heaven. That's why God said, let make us a man that in our own image, in our own likeness, to rule over the earth. God wanted someone like him, but not living in heaven, but we on earth, to rule the earth, to manage the earth, to have dominion in the earth, to put things on the earth the way everybody wanted. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. That's why when uh, the European came to Africa or Asia or Latin America, they wanted all these colonies to behave like them, to act like them, to talk like them. That's why the first thing they did, they stopped all the languages the, the indigenous were speaking. They said, everyone has to speak English now. That's what the colonial master was. God want us to speak his language. And his language is here. God want us to act like him. God doesn't want you to go and do abracadabra. All God wants is for you to speak the word. Let there be in the world. And the other thing you have to understand our economy is up, the economy operate is that when the Colonial master came to Africa or to uh, Asia or, or, or Latin America. They removed up the language, and the second thing, they wanted them to talk like the master colonial. And the third thing, he wanted them to dress like them. And the fourth thing, he wanted them to eat like they eat. That's why you see. The Nathan four was translated from the colonial, the colonial master to the colony. If today we are all in suit and tired, that's not the African way. We have the African way. If today we are able to speak in English, act like them, it's because the master wanted his colony a colony to be here the way they want to be here. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If you understand, please say amen. amen. So God, when he brought you on earth, he put you on earth, he wants you to act like him. He wants you to talk like him. He wants you to have his natural character. What are the natural character of God? God is love, God is peace, God is goodness, God is faith. So, God is oppression, God is temperate. So, kindness, the kindness of God. God wants you and I to have all these attributes. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when God is not telling to Joshua to overtake them, to defeat them, God didn't give up all his power, but he gave the power to Joshua to do various tasks. And the task of that day was to defeat the king of Jerusalem, the king of the Amorites, 
the king of Lachis, the king of uh, the beer. He wanted the death on that day to be defeated so the Gibeonites can recover their liberty. So it's important for us to understand that uh, uh, in most states, the power of authority can be, and most of them are in a unilateral contract. Means that you cannot, I cannot, God cannot give you, you cannot sign an elastic power of authority today, and then tomorrow they come and take it. No, it's unilateral. Once it's been given, is given, it cannot be taken away anymore. The same thing we have in the Bible, the term that the gift of the law are without repentance. What it means that once God gives it to you, it will never come and take it. Even if you become the highest sinner, God will still leave it with you. Because he has already given to you. The same thing when God gives you the power of authority, he will never come back to take it away from you. Praise the name of the Lord. So the next one is that the atomy is not only trained or educated uh, 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 in law, but they are also trained and educated to practice in court of law. So that's why when you go with your attorney to court, your attorney will plead your case, and your attorney will ensure that you have been given the best right possible and your case uh, has been won. If you give someone the power of attorney, you grant them also your legal right and you make, you make decisions on your behalf. We have to understand that believers have legal and spiritual power. They have legal authority given to them to act on behalf of God. I act on behalf of God. You act on behalf of God because God has given us power. You may want to say, Pastor, how could that be possible? He said, I've given you power to trade upon serpent and scorpion. And he said, no substance you take will harm you when you act on my behalf. He said to you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. That's the power he gave you. When he said, every tongue that will rise in judgment, you shall condemn it. You don't wait for God to come down and remind you, say, son, Daughter, oh, condemn that statement of me. No, you have to awake to your righteousness. You have to be awake to your right and privileges. Once someone makes a statement, he said, No good will come out of you. You shall rise to say, I condemn that in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot. Be suffering, be uh, 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 destroyed by the enemy, and someone somewhere calling on your name that you should die, and you also, you say, oh, I dream, I saw these people following me to kill me, I ran away. No. You shall stand and say, I will not die, but live to proclaim the goodness of God. Amen. Everyone can fall against me will not stand. Anyone who's seeking to eat me as a flesh and drink my blood as a drink, I come against them in the name of Jesus. No one will use me as a drink. During this season, I will cross over where? Anyone trying to destroy my life, the word of God is with me. I send the fire of the Holy Spirit. The enemy will not perish. Lord, I thank you for the infilling of the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I am God's carrier of fire and power. Yeah. I am too hard to be humble. You've got to confess that to God. When you speak this word, your enemy hear him, they will not play up with you. But if you are always there, quiet, fearful, waiting for somebody to do it for you, you will not make it in life. Remember, this opportunity we have today is to tell us who we are in Christ Jesus. And we are the righteousness of God. And I'm pleased to tell you today that Joshua not only acted because God told him, but Joshua knew that it was the law enforcer. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor.
Amen. I am the Lord enforcer. So it's important we understand who we are in the kingdom of God. It's important we understand where God is taking us. God will not bring you here in the United Kingdom for you just to be watching buses passing by. Look at all the things. The wind blowing from the left of the right. And when you say, oh, I'm in the United States. God brought you here for purpose. You have to sit day and night. Why was I born in this land? Why my father came in this land? Why am I here? How will I make the purpose of God come to pass in my life? Because one of the things we have to understand, God, in his purpose, he wants us to have his character. He wants us to have relationships. And he wants us to have not only the relationship, but he wants us to function like him. God wants us to function like him. Our God is not God of poverty or lack of God of poverty. Our God is a God of abundance. Our God is a God where rich, wealth and riches belong to him. Amen. Remember in the book of Deuteronomy, he's telling us that don't go and brag yourself that my 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 power has brought me wealth. No, it's telling them in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he's saying that when you become wealthy, don't go to yourself. Because what you have is my power has made you wealthy. And you have to know that. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Joshua here was a kingdom enforcer. Using the prerogative, whenever you hear about prerogative, means about right or privilege on earth to impose a divine rule. Joshua, as a, a, a law enforcer, remembers his right as the elect of God to lead Israel into victory on behalf of the peculiar people. Joshua spoke what he had the right to speak. Those rights are from the word of God. And he said, what God said to him in Joshua chapter 1, verse uh, 8, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For so then, you will make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous, you will make your way successful and everything you need, God will make it available for you. The attorney will always read the book of law. I don't know if you've ever seen an attorney. The attorney will always carry big law books because in everything, he reminds the judge, he said, oh, my, your honor, in the uh, I think it's so, so, so. But here, you have to remember to remind the Lord by bringing the Bible saying, Father, you said in Isaiah 43, verse 26, that I should remind you of my merit. My merit is that I have the righteousness of God. Amen. I don't sing of God. I'm always in your presence. I have taught people the word. I have led them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, ignore me not. Keep not silent over my case. Mm. At that time, you are speaking to what you have the right to speak as the authority of God. Because God has said to you, this word shall not depart from your mouth. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I want to define a little bit the law enforcement so you can understand what I'm talking about. The law enforcement is the activity of some members of government who act in an organized manner to enforce the law by, dis by discovering, by detaining, by rehabilitating, and uh, by punishing people who violate uh, the rules and laws governing that society. So here, you have to understand uh, when they call you a, a law enforcer, like a police officer is a law enforcer. And the police has the ability to discover the offense, put it together, take it before the judge, and the judge decides what to do with it. 
not only they have the ability to uh, uh, discover, that's why we hear him because people know he's a detective police officer. Because his job is to find the offense, detail, rehabilitate him. These are people who are already gone into prison. They have to be, they have to be uh, uh, released. Now, the local force is looking at how do I put them back into the community so they're no longer a danger, so they're no longer a burden. And also, they have them, they are starting to punish. When these five kings came to destroy or came to attack the Gibeonites, it was the right of the Gibeonites and the Joshua to pursue all this kingdom who came to power. Good. You also have to understand in your life, you cannot live in a home whereby your health is always a problematic. You cannot live in a family whereby argument is all the time. Hatred is there. Because these are kingdoms. You have the kingdom of life. You have the kingdom of hatred. You have the kingdom of uh, uh, making things difficult for you. You have the kingdom of fornication. You have the kingdom of uh, 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 the, the last of the flesh, the last of the eye, the pride of life. These things you have to remember when it comes to you where you lie easily, you steal easily, you forget easily, you are too lazy, you stay uh, in bed for long hours, you are into gossip. These are kingdoms which come to destroy you. But you have to wake up and fight all of them. I will not lie. I will not steal. I will not gossip. I will not stand the sins. These are your fight. You have to fight this thing because it removes the value in you. It removes godliness in you. And you become an agent of sin. You become an agent of darkness. Now, everything that God planned for you will not come to pass because someone has hijacked what God as it prepared for you. If you understand, please say amen. amen. So law enforcement is uh, the department of people who enforce law. You have to enforce law. You have to investigate crime. You have to make arrest. Years ago, I don't know whether they still do it in the in some ministries, they excommunicate the excommunicated people who misbehave. I don't know whether they still do it, but the ministry or the house of God has also to punish the people who misbehave. Like I said to you, in this house, we will not allow someone to come and say, oh, I had a dream, this sister is my wife, this brother is my husband, we will stop you ahead of time. Because if we know that this sister is already married, this brother is already married, God is not a God of confusion. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. In closing, as an attorney, you have to understand that God gave you power. God gave you dominion over negative forces. He gave you the power over darkness. He gave you the ability to determine what is right and wrong. You cannot live your life in stagnation. When you see that you are stagnating, you got to wake up. So my life can't be like this. I have to move on. You went before we cross off on the 31st, you have to self-assess. You don't need anybody to come around you and tell you, oh, last year you didn't make it, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And look now, you are moving to 24. I'm uh, going to carry No, you yourself have to sit down and say, I made my plan. This year, uh, I need to buy a house. I need to buy a house. I need to get married. I didn't get married. I have to save at least 10000 but I only saved 3000 So you've got to look at where in your, in, in 
in your life things have not worked well. I said I will serve the Lord, but I only serve the Lord when I want Him. I said that I will give my parents, or I will give my sisters, or I will help people out. And those who are vulnerable, such as the deaf, the blind, I will help them. You didn't do it. But you, based on that self assessment, you're going to go back and write down so you can remember. God is telling other He's a prophet. God is God. He cannot forget. But he still commanded other people to say, write it down. Because when you write it down, at the appointed time, those things will come to pass. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you have to understand that God has given you to walk in authority. When people are fearing evil, you don't fear evil. Remember what David said about fearing evil? He said, I will fear no evil, though I go through the valley of death. Hallelujah. Amen. And the valley of death is death. People only die on earth. You never know what dies. If you want to look where people die, they die on earth. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You have to be able to command the wicked order. You know, many of us uh, have not prospered and gone too far because our forefathers, our parents, made some kind of a deal in the covenant with altars that talk about us, that call us that you cannot move forward, you belong to me, I will suffer. They, they, they throw all kinds of arrows to us. But remember, you have to stand in control. You have to align yourself in the kingdom administration of heaven. Because if we do not align ourselves in the kingdom administration of heaven, we will not be able to make it in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The same power God gave to Joshua to overcome the five kings. And I've explained to them those five kings, we still have them today. The king of lies, the king of stealing, the king of fornication, the king of gossip, the king of hatred, the king of envy. Those kingdoms still open this day around us. But we cannot allow these things to come. We have to know that we are overcoming. We are the righteousness of God. Our lives should not be stagnant. We have to move forward. We have to make progress. We have to see that we are not only improving, but we are also improving people around us. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let us stand. That's it for me, brothers and sisters, those of you who are watching me from home. It was a proud, pleasing pleasure to share the word of God with you. But remember, it's not over until 